How's it going friends and welcome back to the channel and part 2 of Trumpeter's 132nd Avenger build. So most of this video really is going to be looking at pretty much finishing the model. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of um, some of the builds. I didn't, admittedly I didn't film all that much of it I'm afraid. Um, but to be fair the kit went together so easily well I kind of forgot <laughs> to do my job basically. Um, but most of this will be looking at, um, you know, painting and weathering the model. So stick around to the end of the video to see the finished model. And yeah, to grab yourself a brew and a bicky and let's just jump straight into it. So jumping straight into this one. Now considering this is a really well uh, detailed model, Weirdly, they've missed out the landing lamp. Um, so there's no detail in there whatsoever. So I decided to put uh, the lamp in. Um, you're probably not going to see because obviously it's on the bottom. But, you know, just in case. So I'm using some plaster card. And you can see I've heated it up and using the back of a paintbrush just to put a little bit of a, a dome in that soft plastic. And then once I've got sort of some of a rough domey shape that I'm happy with I'll cut that out and glue it into place and there we go simple as that and I would think that will do quite nicely with a bit of a uh, silver paint uh, it'll look like a good lamp moving on putting the uh, gun barrel into place really simply detailed and you know I think you're only really gonna see this if you have uh, the gun bay open which it won't be and or having uh, the wings up you will see some of that barrel cutting through the wheel bay the last thing we need to do before putting all the wings together is being able to connect the wings to the uh, ailerons or vice versa um, all you're using is, is these um, steel rods which are provided and these sort of photo etch catches they slot quite nicely into place and to fix them i'll just use some super glue now these can be um put in so they are uh, free moving um i'm not going to do that uh, for this one i'm going to uh, completely fix them in uh, solid later on but all you need to do is just put the catch sort of connected part uh into these slots which have got like a little kind of bar type thing molded in and again just super glue them into place now to make the wings to be able to uh, open and close trumpet have added these hardened uh, plastic uh, sort of connector parts um, which are on both the inner wing root and the outer and there's a simple uh, bar that goes through the two to connect them Now the fit where the bar goes in isn't uh, a very tight one so it keeps dropping out. So what I did was is I super glued uh, the ends which will obviously fix it to one half but also keep the other half free and moving so it can give us the option of having the wings open or closed. Once I got the top wing fixed to the lower half, it was time to start putting some photo etching. And there's these nice little, uh, well, they're actually brass and photo etch. Um, I assume that these are kind of like, uh, maybe like wind wing protector parts from, you know, when the uh, wings open and close to sort of prevent any major knocking. I have absolutely no idea. I'm just making that up. Um, it could be the case, but I don't know. But it's a nice little, uh, added detail and it's more detailed than you know the kit part itself now there is one that comes up towards the leading edge of the wing so to make it a little bit easier to bend it round because these are quite um, you know quite solid pieces of brass um, so I kneeled it so as you can see just using a light until it goes to that sort of bluey sort of tinge quench it in a little bit of water and then bend it around the wing to give it the shape 
and then I further flexed it round a little bit more just to get a bit of extra uh, bend on it and then just super glued it into place. Now, I didn't really want to put the rockets on, but I still wanted to put the uh, mounting points on for the rockets. So I cut off, which I assume is kind of like a ignition wire, and cut those off and uh, drilled them out just to give the impression that, you know, they should basically go in there rather than just having a flat bit of plastic. I also milled out uh, a little bit across uh, the top because I am guessing that there would be a little bit of shape in there for the uh, the rockets uh, when they are fitted uh, to these mounting brackets. So again, just using my rotor at all, just to sort of, you know, take some of that out. And then what I'll do afterwards, just to clean it up a little bit further, is just put some Tamiya Extra Thin in there, and that will get rid of any, you know, rough edges and the swath that's left behind. So my right, Dave who sold me this kit also had bought some upgrades uh, undercarriage. Of course you can see these are nice brass and very well uh, detailed. Um, obviously the, the model obviously is quite large and it's going to weigh uh, quite a bit so these are probably quite a good investment for this sort of kit. Now I decided to uh, pin uh, the plastic parts of the landing gear that's going to go in here. Uh, I thought it was going to be a bit more stable than just super gluing it into place. So with my rotary tool, I just drilled out obviously a couple of holes and uh, just pinned them into place uh, with a little bit of copper wire. And again, super glued uh, the ends of those so it kept them uh, free and moving. But of course, they were still glued into place on the you know that plastic parts of the undercarriage. There was also a little bit of cleanup, as you can see the seam lines there, they were just uh, sanded down with a metal foil. Once I was done with that, I just stuck everything together. Now, I know I haven't shown much of the build uh, portion of this. Um, I kind of forgot to do it, but to be honest with you, it was really dead simple and easy, and everything actually fitted together really, really nicely. So we're moving on to painting. And I decided because obviously it's quite a large model and to try and make it a little bit more interesting, uh, I did a little bit of pre-shading. Um, I actually used uh, a flat white for this um, and then just lightly went in, over it again, uh, just filling in all the gaps and just sort of, you know, kind of leaven it out, but still giving them that faded panel line look. Now for this one, I'm doing the two-tone blue, and I started off with uh, light blue by Tami, which is XF23. I did the main coat, I also did it quite high up, because we're gonna um, give us a bit of playroom for the uh, darker blue. And for the rest of this, I did a kind of reverse uh, panel liner. Uh, for the light blue, I just added a small amount of white, so it was just slightly uh, lighter, and then just filled in all the panel lines. Now, I always find it a good idea when you're doing these type of camo schemes to do the lighter colour um, a lot higher because it gives you a little bit of uh, playroom when you're doing the top dark coat because, of course, it's a lot easier to, you know, retouch up the darker stuff than it is the lighter. I also tend to start a little bit high as well with the darker colours just in case because uh, sometimes I find it a bit difficult to try and follow uh, the paint scheme and try and paint it at the same time and which in the case of this was quite a good thing because I've forgotten actually the uh, darker blue actually come a lot further down uh, the fuselage than I actually thought it did So I also wanted to have a kind of feathered line because uh, some of the reference photos I've seen are feathered. And the problem doing this and obviously doing it freehand and not paying attention, 
you can gain quite a large amount of overspray. Now, I was doing quite well, and up to a point, I sort of seemed to have lost uh, any sort of focus on it. So I had to go over everything again uh, with the lighter color, and it did take uh, a few passes to try and get this all uh, you know, covered over. With some of the, like the center area here, it's only quite a fine uh, spray, so it was actually a lot easier uh, you know, to repaint and go over again. So as you can see with a few passes and a little bit of time, I've managed to neaten all those uh, overspray. Now as it says I'm doing exactly the same as I did before, I added again a little bit of white uh, into this and just filled in again those uh, centre of the panels and again this is just trying to give that sort of faded look, of course these spend a lot of time on top of uh, aircraft carriers and in the hot sun. Not the heat makes any difference, but obviously the sun and the UVA will obviously start to, you know, uh, bleach uh, that dark uh, blue colouring. Now it does look really, really bright. Uh, unfortunately, it's, it's something to do with the colour settings and the light to use within the spray booth. But actually, this sort of does show you. Um, you know better on, on how I do this and how it kind of looks uh, but in real life and you'll see in the glamour shots at the end of the video um, it's a lot more sort of subdued and subtle than it actually looks here so I'm not going with the kit markings uh, for this build I'm doing my own and I've used uh, Montex masks for this. I've used them before. They're really good. They go down really nicely. They stick really well. And they don't leave any sticky residue afterwards. All you need to do is make sure that the area surrounding the mask is well masked off as well. And it's also good practice when um, spraying markings is around the, particularly around the edge areas and particularly on sort of uneven areas, is to spray uh, directly down on the mask rather then at an angle and that will reduce any bleeds. I'm also going to start with the white base layer again because it's going to be easy to build up from the lightest to the darkest than the other way round. And I'm doing the same as I did uh, on the underneath the aircraft. I'm using white again to make a cloudy sort of pattern for where the panels are and then very lightly over the top build that up with again the same flat base white um, just to tie it all in and then just giving it light uh, coatings to build it up to what you are happy with. So what I tend to do is the areas that in the case of this is that are going to be white I pretty much put the entire mass down just to make sure everything sits in the right places so the bars are going to be white as well as the star so I'm going to put some of the um, you know masks down for those and again, just to make sure that I get them all in the right position. Remove the ones that I'm not going to be needing. So for this, it's going to be the outer ring and these parts that I'm about to remove around the star. And then I will spray again exactly the same as I did before in a sort of cloudy fashion and then build it up, um, you know, to the sort of right opacity that I want. Now what I'll do is I'll put the outer sort of ring or outer masking on and just to make sure that there's no gaps. I mean, generally these Montex masks are really well cut and they're quite tight, but just to doubly make sure I'll go around um, the areas with a liquid mask and just to, again, seal up those gaps as a just in case. Now I'll move on to the blue and to avoid um, any sort of purple coming out of it with with the red i'll go over the the white again and then go in with the blue and then it's time for the big reveal and there's nothing like a mass pull off uh, to see how well this has come out
And I think actually this one has actually turned out quite well. Now, one of the worst ones were these E16s because they had to be yellow. So what I went over, the same as before, doing a bit of pre-shade with some white and then going over with some yellow. Because where this one is positioned and it's over a lot of sort of ray surfaces, this one didn't go as well. The yellow I was using was, was pretty thin to start with already. And even though I'd thought I'd press down um, you know pretty well on the mask unfortunately there was quite a lot of bleed on this one but fortunately because it was over a dark color it was a lot easier to repaint and clean up once all the mistakes were all rectified and cleaned up i moved on to varnishing the model and then putting on a oil wash for the wash i used artist oils ultramarine blue and burnt umber all thinned down using odorless thinners. Once I left it to dry for roughly about 20, 25 minutes to half an hour, I then used a dry uh, kitchen cloth to wipe away any excess. Any areas where it was a little bit stubborn, I used a little bit more thinner and then wiped it off. It's also best practice, and particularly on some of these larger scale models, is to work in small sections. Now at this point I was quite ready to move on but I had a small mishap. The engine cowl had come away from the fuselage and a large droplet of glue had fell onto the nose cowl. So I then had to sand it down and re-go through all the previous uh, painting steps, varnish it again and then apply the wash over the top and try and blend it in with the rest of the model. And if I do so so myself, I did a bloody good job of it. So once that mess is all sorted out, I can finally move on to chipping the model. So for the most of this, I'm going to use sponge chipping, which is one of my favourite and I think one of the most effective uh, you know, chipping techniques. And all we need is a good old sponge, uh, pull a few bits off to make it a little bit more irregular, dip it into some silver paint, which for this one I'm using uh, Vallejo silver. And basically get rid of all the excess uh, paint on there uh, until you start getting sort of small you know little speckles just like this and then we can start applying it to the model as always we focus on areas that are going to get the most amount of traffic so stuff like the tailing edge of the wing where the crew would obviously enter uh, onto the aircraft and up along uh, the wing route and some of the sides of the fuselage. Once that's done, I'll come in with a paintbrush and basically do a little bit of dot to dot and join up some of the uh, sort of medium sort of size chips, uh, add them together to make them slightly larger and attempt to make a few more kind of irregular patterns in there, as well as adding some scratch work in there as well, again, to give that more of a kind of realistic looking, you know, scratched and worn effect. Now, what you could always do is, sometimes, and I have done this in the past, is after doing this, I'll give it another wash over to sort of take some of the shine off a little bit and make it look a little bit more you know kind of older older scratch wear and what we can always do if we want to is to either reinstate a few of those scratches to make look you know as you know this is quite a well-worn aircraft and you know it, it gathers a lot of dirt but this it's still you know in sort of in some sort of use um in the case of this one i'm not going to do that i'm actually going to keep this one actually for me quite uh, relatively uh, light uh, chipping on this one so once that was done i was really excited to start removing the canopy masks and basically seeing how much of this detail that we've put into this model uh, was actually visible i was actually quite surprised uh, to you know see actually there's quite a lot of detail you can actually see 
Okay, in the central section, you know, most of that detail is hidden really deep down, which kind of really didn't surprise me uh, all that much. But the turret, you know, you can see a lot of the detail in there, uh, which is really nice. It's kind of not surprising because it's very, you know, very glazed. Um, so you can see all the stuff that we've put in there. And the cockpit section also, um, unsurprisingly again, because of its size was uh, quite uh, visible and you can see all the details that we had put in there. All that was left to do was super glue the side uh, canopy dory bits and the, the piece of canopy between the main canopy and the turret. So my friends, it's nearly time to reveal the finished model. I do hope you have uh, enjoyed this video. If you have done so far and you are new to the channel or if you haven't done so already, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. If you'd like to support further, there are links in the description down below as well. And one last thing before I go is myself and James from LPJ Models have set up a Facebook group um, called Glue Sniffers. Basically, this group is pretty much the same as every other group where you can post your builds and help other people out and, you know, ask questions and all that sort of, you know, usual malarkey. But one of the things that we really want to do with this uh, group is basically help others uh, to promote themselves, uh, whether it be, you know, your Facebook page, your Instagram, uh, YouTube channels, even uh, businesses, big or small, we'd like to try and get um, basically everybody on board and build you know hopefully a helpful and you know basically a thriving uh, community of modelers and yeah so you know come over check it out and basically uh, promote yourself whether again like channels or Facebook group pages or even blogs vlogs or whatever um you know so please consider checking that out we'd love to see you over there posting your work so anyway it's time to show you the finished build and again i do hope you have enjoyed it thank you ever so much for watching and i'll catch you again soon